Hello, hello, my friends, and welcome to another video, not another episode of the Guardian Gang SMP, though it kind of is, and I cannot fly. Oh my goodness. Today's going to be a little bit of a different episode. A while ago on the episode where I built the Sea Dragon Leviathan, I believe that was episode 59, towards the end, I asked you guys if you would like a process on how I design stuff for survival, for my survival worlds and stuff. And so I had the idea of how I can format this and still make it interesting and not just me talking. So what I've decided to do is over here we have this village. It's an actual village. We have villagers underneath it and it has sat dormant and just basically non-existent except for this little house that Megan made for a long time. We've even had it outlined, but we haven't done anything <laughs> with it. We even laid out where, like what, Claris, that's supposed to be cleric. I can't spell apparently. We even mapped out what jobs we wanted at each different part. But instead, they just they live underground in a hole, and they've lived here for a long, long time. So I thought that for today, I could design a building for some of these guys. And that I could show you guys the process for that. So we just do one building, and I show you guys the process. And while I show you guys the process, I also show you kind of how I did things for other builds that you guys know on the server, like the Sea Dragon Leviathan and like the Copper Shop and my Dragon Organics as well. So I think we're going to hop into my creative world and see how that looks. Okay, so first I'm going to show you guys kind of how I organize things. For every world that I play in, I'll have the actual world, like if it's single player here, I have the world, otherwise multiplayer it goes in there. Um, and then I will always have a actual copy of it that's in creative mode. Like here we have that for the survival and then here for the survival I have a flat world. So always a creative backup and a super flat creative world. So we're going to first look at the Guardian Gang creative testing. The backups are never as interesting because I will often delete them and just use a new backup. So I have an updated world. And so I'm, which was a really good time to record this because I believe there are no spoilers in here. And so this world is a mess. I just build and I have used this world as a creative spot for me for the Guardian Gang server since I did the dragons. So August, July, around that area. I started with this dragon. This was the first organic I ever made. And then I moved on to, no, this Toothless was. This was the first one that I liked. This is my Toothless. I love Toothless, but building a Toothless organic is so difficult because I, like, Blackstone is so textured that I, I, I don't like it. But then, like, concrete is no texture and there's no stairs and slabs. So it's difficult and that's why there's no Toothless Organic in my How to Train Your Dragon inspired base. Um, cause I can't do Toothless justice. <laughs> but Cloud Jumper, I can do Cloud Jumper justice. Anyway, enough talk about dragons, except here are those four dragons that are flying around in the Guardian Gang SMP. And some things you can tell that I build completely, like here we have the copper shop in its creative copy. And this is a very important part of the process that I will talk to in a little bit after I kind of go through things. Here was my little manor for the Halloween district. This is where you can see how I don't always plan everything out completely. So you can see the back half did not exist. I only built the front half in creative before I decided it was good enough and I jumped into survival. And I try never to delete things in here. Like this was originally going to be kind of what I was going to use for a Halloween thing. So I try to kind of keep stuff. And then here are the market stalls that you guys know. And then the library. 
that you guys saw. We kind of did some concept stuff here. And also the Christmas stuff, the holiday stuff that you guys saw, and also some base stuff, those silos that we did a long time ago. And then a little bit of redstone as well for the Guardian Olympics that we did a long time ago at this point. Anyway, it is time that I talk about the process. After I get an idea, the first thing I always do is I figure out the blocks. This was when Rosamund and I were actually figuring out blocks for the thermal plant in the nether. So this was a long time ago. We were, we were originally going to go with copper instead of emeralds. Can you imagine how more incomplete the build would be if we were using copper? It's, we'd still be doing the exterior walls. <laughs> we'd still be doing that. And so all over the place, you, you're just going to see these because it's the first thing I always do. I always figure out what blocks I'm going to build with. And then what I tend to do is I try to figure out how I'm going to use those blocks. So you can kind of see that a little bit here. This was kind of a combination of me laying them out and figuring out how I was going to use them. So it was figuring out that the bricks were going to be the foundation for the copper shop and the stripped spruce logs were going to be pillars on the corners and that the jungle wood was going to be an under trim on the roof and that dark oak was going to outline the parts of the roof. So stuff like that. Sometimes I blend it into the actual build if it works out, but over here is a really good example of that. So over here, actually, this, this was actually kind of a ranking blocks when because if Megan and I were trying to figure this out together when we were working on the library so we ranked stuff to decide what we liked the best or the worst <laughs> netherite imagine if we actually used that and then this was us figuring out how we were going to use each each block in the actual build before we went ahead and actually built it so know your blocks and know what each block is going to be those are two important parts and then with that, I feel like you can move on to the next step, which our copper shop shows very, very, very well. I will grab different colors of concrete. I always use these colors because they're my favorite concrete colors. They are just so bright and vibrant and I'll just outline shapes. So I know I have something that looks interesting before I add all these different blocks to it. So the blocks and how they're going to be used is one step. And then separate from that is the outline. And so I'll tend to outline each room and whatever. And then once I have all these shapes, I can tell really easily if one area is really flat or like if something's too big or what it's super easy to tell and sometimes as well what i'll do is i'll outline the roofs as well so that would just involve with a concrete color probably one that you're not using elsewhere if i'm honest and just making a little roof outline though and the real thing this roof is a little bit lower i'll do that sometimes especially if the roof looks like it's going to be complicated which on this guy it was, but I just figured out when I was actually building it. So after you know your shape, you know your blocks, how you're using your blocks, I tend to just play around and come up with something. And then I will go in and add the smaller details like the anvil and the gates on the windows and stuff. Organics are a whole nother field. <laughs> like they're a whole nother ballpark. Organics are weird and the fact that I haven't built a whole lot. All the organics that you've seen in any of my videos are all the organics that you've seen that I've built and been okay with. Ignore this thing, it was just copied and pasted from Toothless but I used World Edit and World Edit doesn't like stairs or slabs so I know this is a monstrosity of a light fury. Please ignore it. And I'll often use World Edit to help out, especially with organics. I only know the basics, like replace and set and move and rotate. I don't know much else, and I learned from other people on YouTube. And these... I figured out the blocks beforehand, like you saw. It's very, very similar step to everything else, like a normal structure. 
And, but then I just looked at a reference picture. If you want an actual tutorial on organics, I'm still new at this, even if I am really proud of this, and I think you'd be better off looking at someone else for these, but you can see my different stages and I would make backups. So this was the first one, and then I would copy it and I moved it here. And then I made the, I made these longer, but I kept that in case I changed my mind. That's important. And then here I added the details, like the other blocks and stuff onto this organic. I still got the shape down before I added in all the details. It's kind of similar to my process that I explained over there. And then lastly, I played with rotation because I felt like I built too many organics that were straight on. And so we had a 45 degree angle one. I just used the world edit command and fixed up the mistakes manually. Again, don't trust me with organics, but this is how it looked in the creative world before I built it on the Guardian Gang server. But yeah, I, I'll use a stick for Litmatica, I'll use a debug stick sometimes, and, and then a wooden axe for world edit, and then I, I have stuff, you know, in world edit, not world, <laughs> in Litmatica, because sometimes it's easier just to copy. But now, I think it's time that we get into the actual process for a build that we can put in the village that doesn't exist. Because this village has been just sitting there for a long time, a lot of the build scheme has already been decided. It was decided a long time ago, back when we took down the village before I was even recording anything. And so we had agreed on bricks and stripped spruce logs and terracotta colors so it'd look vaguely similar to the iron farm which is i believe green terracotta bricks and stripped spruce logs and dark oak so they fit kind of in a theme together and then of course we want the woods that we would use so we would have something like this for a block scheme for a building in here. And let's make, I think we can make a little cleric house. Looking at back at the town plan we had kind of made, clerics were one of the few that had kind of a workplace somewhere else. And I feel like doing an armor or a weaponsmith in this video would end up a bit too similar to that because we do have a little kind of furnace and whatever that could kind of would end up being very similar for something with making armor or weapons or tools so i think we're gonna stick with something like a cleric and it's just their house not their workplace so we can basically just kind of build a basic house but make it fancy and so we'd have our foundation we're going to have this on the corners and then we can either have sandstone or brick not brick terracotta and we can change up this terracotta color and it will vary throughout the village and also these should stick out we want depth in our build please and thank you i think i'm gonna go with light gray terracotta instead of the green here this is a green it makes me think iron farm and i still don't want to think about that iron farm i don't care if it's been it's so long since I've had to work on that thing. I <laughs> the combination makes me think iron farm. So I think something like this could work well. And then I also added some oak planks to my hop bar. And we could have that kind of be an under trim to the roof. And the roof could be dark oak trim. And then maybe a dark a deep slate roof actually something like this and something you may have noticed i'm not even bothering to take out the slabs or stairs i'm still working with just the basic blocks part of me wants to use jungle but i don't want to make it any more similar to that build what else could we use we'd want something that could be a slab i think i think a oak would work the best spruce looks too samey with that okay so now we have those blocks figured out, and that means we can work on the outline. 
and because we already have the plan of the village laid out we are kind of limited in how we can start off for the first floor but if i remember right it was something like this and i'm gonna go make sure that's right it was not the same so good thing i checked so this is what we get to start with for our base floor and this is kind of two distinct shapes we have one line here and then we also have this so those are our kind of two shapes to deal with and so we can pillar them up and cube cubify these cubify and then we have something like this and this is what we have to go with for the first floor if we stay by the town plan, which I would like to, but we can make the second floor a little bit more interesting because we have a shape here. Like these, this could make for a slightly bigger second floor in terms of width compared to this room here. And then I imagine the entrance being here with maybe a tiny little balcony or deck whatever you want to call it so maybe we can extend this out by one as well so we have something like that which is already looking a lot more interesting for shape kind of with how i wanted to make that interesting and we can also make it a shorter height as well and we have some variation there and i think that's good for just one cleric living in his house i think that's pretty good so now we'd want to figure out a roof and we could go two different ways for this roof we could either make it a roof like this right here or like this this. Don't ask me for roof terms. I don't know them. That. Does that get too pointy? No, but it is an even center. Why did I design it like this? We're gonna deal with it. I prefer odd center. Odd center is just overall superior in Minecraft. <laughs> Do something like this over here. And then I can just bring this across. We have the roof laid out. And one thing I realized is that this, this area is really flat. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring out the wand. And I'm going to hope I'm on the right Y level. Position 1. Position 2. And I'm just going to shift it move one. Oh, I did it right, but we did destroy some of this stuff. But I can undo that and do move minus A. Yes. So the roof will go through this part of the house, which will look, which will make the house interesting on all different sides. And so now at this point, what I do is I will make a copy of this so I still have the original outline like I do there and then we can work on the copy. We've got our copy set up and I think for this I am going to do it time lapse style but it'll be a bit slower and I'll st still talk through the process. So I started off immediately with um, the foundation and I also moved it up another block so our foundation would be a little bit bigger and you're gonna see I start off by just kind of getting the base like the planes down if that makes sense so just the flat pieces of brick and the terracotta before I start going in with the smaller things and the other features like the roof and stuff so then it's like I'm working almost kind of like a blank canvas like I put the base down before I get painting if that makes sense so now I'm going in with the pillars and stuff adding in those details 
And now that I have the pillars and the windows set up, I'm moving on to the second floor and here's where I got a little bit lazy and pulled out some world edit stuff. And now is when I get to do some stuff with the roof. And you're going to see I kind of change the outline a little bit from what we originally had in our concrete form. You're going to see that as we continue to work just because I felt like the roof was giving me some trouble with how I had outlined it out. It looked good in the outline, but it just wasn't being pulled off how I imagined it on the actual thing. And so I changed it on the fly which is okay because you still have your basic idea, but refinement, it's part of the process. That's always good. You're gonna see I debate a lot with myself with how I want the roof to kind of lay across the sides of the build. Because remember where we have that A-frame, I think that's what it's called. That That's the front and the back, whereas this is the side. It took me a little bit of debate to figure out how I wanted that. So try multiple things. You're in a creative world, so it's nice and easy. This area is where I one of my favorite parts of the build. So the second story here, it kind of overhangs the first half. And so I got to do a cool little thing with pillars here and I tried having them on the side and in the front. They were looked much nicer here in the front. And so getting to make those supports to make it look realistic was a lot of fun. And I just did a similar thing on the other side, even though it wasn't hanging over. So now we're getting into some of my favorite part with kind of the smaller details now that we have the walls, the pillars of wood for some depth, and the roof. I'm going in and adding stuff like the flower bed and the deck to get up to the house and also the window framing. I've been doing this thing all the time in my builds with the slab and the gate and the trap door to frame my windows. It looks fantastic on these two tall windows and they're nice and simple. And then when in with larger windows, I tend to do, I'm doing those flower beds. And then also you've probably seen this in a lot of my builds at this point where we have the fence and the lantern and then a piece of the stripped wood poking out with a button on top. I got that from Cortez back when we did the 1.18 village together with other people on the Evermore SMP. And I've been doing it all the time because it just looks fantastic and it's such a good way to give those pillars something more interesting. And here we have the finished build, all constructed on the actual Guardian Gang SMP as my first addition to this area. It has waited a long time for this day, but I absolutely love how this looks from the side. I will admit the front and the back are a little less interesting, but if we think about it, Right now, it's this side that is visible from this town center, and in the future, it'll probably be covered up a little bit. But like this angle, beautiful for this house. And I did do a little bit of an interior. I don't have any clips of that because I'll be honest, my interiors have no process. I just throw stuff together and I look at my previous builds to see what I did as inspiration from myself to myself. So, I mean, he's, he's kind of a little bit fancy. I mean, they've got a jukebox or a cleric and a little brewing stand for when they gotta, you know, brew some potions at home. <laughs> you know, remote work, it's a thing. <laughs> Maybe even in Minecraft now. But yeah, I hope that I explained my process well enough that it was easy to follow and either you learned something or just thought it was interesting and I hope you also liked me kind of showing off my creative world. I really enjoyed showing that. I've been wanting to show it for a long time and it finally worked out where I wouldn't be spoiling anything for the future if I show it in a clip. So I hope you enjoyed 
and I hope that I will see you next time for another video. And until then, I hope you have a good one. Bye-bye.